Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channels Television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Hidden explosives planted by Boko Haram kills JTF member, wounds others in Yobe State. Fresh fighting in southern Kaduna claims 12 lives. Lawyers call for investigation into 13 billion Naira unclaimed funds in Ikui. And nuclear uncertainty looms as North Korea threatens another nuclear test. Just to quickly remind you now that for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device, log on to m.channelstv.com or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. Having the Channels TV and Channels 24 apps will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature so you too can be part of the news. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Well, now we have some of those pictures and let's share them with you. And the first one we have is this image of a woman carrying a television stand on a motorcycle from Gumau in Toro local government area of Bauchi State. Our eyewitness reporter wants the authorities to sensitize citizens on how to carry items such as these. And the next photo is from Suruleri Axis of Lagos State. It shows the efforts of residents clearing a gutter constructed by them. Our eyewitness reporter says this is important with the outbreak of meningitis in some parts of the country. Our final image is of a flooded close in Port Harcourt River State. Our eyewitness reporter is calling on the River State Government to provide a drainage system in the area. Thanks a lot for sending all your pictures and contributing to the news. The Isle of an Atema, which has for some years now served as a home for some Bakasi returnees following their displacement, was recently gutted by fire, leaving over 5,000 homeless and their means of livelihood destroyed. The inhabitants are calling on the government to urgently relocate them to a more suitable location. This next report looks at the experiences of these displaced Nigerians. These bags of rice are not seized. Neither is this a bus of contraband peddlers. This is a mission to supply people who have for a while been cut off from society. First, by situation beyond their control, then followed by water. The boats depart to the location in the island of Ataema. And after 40 minutes, the shanties appear in the distance. The sound of engines has roused some of the residents here who emerge to see if all is well. Although, one cannot shake off the feeling that others are watching from their huts and bushes. The idling boat suggests that today is probably a rest day for the fishermen. Otherwise, the news of the materials to be delivered has halted their activities. The almost 5,000 inhabitants of the community finally throng out, with some waving handkerchiefs in anticipation of what lies in store. It's hard to find words to describe this place where people reside. Everywhere looks as though something vicious tore through it, and something did. Their homes were recently gutted by fire making their already precarious existence as Bakasi refugees a lot more pathetic. The news increases the number of hopeful recipients. The first receivers knock off anything standing in their way to stash their prize. The children, who are noticeably high in number, cannot fight for the relief materials, so they gather to play. Others tend to the business of getting hooks ready for the next fishing day. The people who hardly receive visitors are not reluctant in venting their problems. And who can blame them? Light in the hospital in the day. got my gun bill houses and they people for engine, the fishing material. That's what we want.
A former federal lawmaker, also from the Bakasi, is the head of this expedition. She is hopeful that the time will come when those who need to act do so. And by the time the National Refugee Commission intervenes and uh, NEMA intervenes, by the time they intervene, then there will be enough food to go around. That time is in both excess and short supply for these people, who, while the way for development, increase their population. But the downside of that is the more they grow, the fiercer the battle for the leases that comes away become. To aviation now, the federal government says the runway of the Nnamdi Azikiwe Airport Abuja is 100% complete and set for reopening to airlines on Wednesday. Speaking exclusively to Channel's television in Abuja, the airport manager, Mr. Mahmoud Sani, says the airport is ready and the terminal buildings have been upgraded. From a dilapidated runway to a fully rehabilitated one, the countdown to the reopening of the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport has finally begun. April 19th, 2017, the deadline for reopening is now a matter of hours. From the runway to the terminal buildings and the waiting lounge, airport officials are putting finishing touches. But the question is still being asked whether the airport will be reopened on the 19th of April 2017. The airport is good to go. We thank the federal government for coming into the rehabilitation of Abuja Airport. The airport has never had it so good since it was commercial in 1999. It was not only the runway that was rehabilitated. We also seize the opportunity to improve on our facilities at the terminal building. As you can see, every part of the terminal building is being touched. We have, we are installing uh, lifts at the terminal B, where we have had a lot of challenges with the age and the fiscal challenge. The airport manager also outlined measures put in place to ensure constant maintenance of the airport. We shall continue to maintain what we have. And we are also optimistic that a second runway will soon come in Abuja Airport. With a second runway, I'm sure uh, a bad one will be closed. We will use the second one. The fear of a smooth takeoff and landing of aircraft at the Namdi, Azikiwe International Airport, has been doused as air travelers can now heave a sigh of relief following the rehabilitation of the airport's runway. Staying in the federal capital, this time crossing over to Ivy Clem. Hey, Ivy. Hello, Ijoma. Uh, President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf of Liberia has appealed to West African leaders to unite in curbing the menace of fake drugs in the sub-region. The Liberian president who made the appeal at the fourth delocalized meeting of the ECOWAS parliament in Monrovia says the region needs to strengthen its internal drug regulatory authorities and powers and enforce drug laws and regulations. Our correspondent Amaka Okafo, just back from Monrovia, reports. This is the fourth delocalized meeting of the ECOWAS parliament. Members of the Committees on Health and Social Services and that of Trade, Customs and Free Movement in the ECOWAS Parliament are in Monrovia to discuss the proliferation of fake and counterfeit drugs in the ECOWAS sub-region. Speaking in French, the Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament is advocating the deployment of financial and legal instruments to tackle the source of the fake and counterfeit drugs in the region. The Speaker of the Liberian Parliament puts the issues in another perspective. Nigeria accounts for about 60% of the value of illicit medicines in our sub-region. Guinea also accounts for 60%. Ivory Coast accounts for 30%. Sale law accounts for 30%, Liberia is at 15%, but the Liberian Health authorities are suggesting that this number may increase to as high as 60%. If nothing is done to curb the proliferation of counterfeit drugs, at least 250 deaths and 340 cases of chronic illnesses occur each year as a result of counterfeit medicines and illegal drugs in West Africa. However, 
The chairman of the Economic Community of West African States charged leaders in the sub-region to wake up and take a firm stand against the menace. All of our countries will need to do more. All of our countries will need to strengthen drug regulatory authorities and their powers to enforce drug laws and regulations. This will require strict regulatory processes, inter-regional surveillance and monitoring systems, information sharing among ECOWAS member states, capacity building and regulatory strengthening at both national and regional levels. Recommendations from this meeting will be passed to the plenary of the ECOWAS Parliament for deliberation and adoption. Another big hand Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. Residents of Otodo Bame community in Etiosa, local government area of Lagos State, are demanding justice in form of resettlement and compensation following their displacement from the waterfront settlement they claim to have been their home for generations. At a news conference in Lagos, southwest Nigeria, non-governmental organizations stressed that nothing short of rehabilitation of the displaced persons by the Lagos State government will give closure to the issue. Without much ado, the press conference attended by leaders and representatives of the Otodo Bame community and the press corps began with facts of the matter. The lawyers who were present later gave a legal angle to the dispute. I don't think it is appropriate, it is right for police, civil defense that are attached to the Lagos State government to now be engaged in joining one party to a claim to destroying uh, uh, properties that belong to a, a, a party in a matter. A leader of the Otodogbame community asked the authorities to take the bull by the horns. The, what they are talking to, tell, to, telling the government is to reform and to rebuild and to put things straight, things in place, so that both the common people and the poor people can live in the same uh, uh, state without problem. For the non-governmental organizations, there's concern for the children affected by the displacement and the issue of right and wrong. Children that have been neglected, abandoned by government, trying to inspire hope in these children, trying to see if they could go to school. These are the same children whose schools have been burned down. These are the same children who have been thrown out of the accommodation, the shelter they've known for years. They are supposed to provide notices to people, they're supposed to hold consultations, they're supposed to receive objections to their plans and consider those objections. There are lots of things that are detailed in their own state law which have been brazenly flouted. Following allegations of complicity, in his response, the Commissioner of Police, Lagos State, Fatai Oshini, absolved the police of any blame in the Otodogbame incident, Which claiming the police the only played their constitutional role. What the police had done in Otodogbame um, that I am aware of um, is to restore law and order in that community. The police action has always been, um, one, preventive, we would do regular patrol of the area. We sometimes bring, you know, bring the uh, the, the main gladiators uh, together to, you know, let them see the reason why they should live in peace. The dust is far from settled on the relocation of the Todo Guamic community, who claim their rights have been infringed on. A fair resolution of the matter would only serve the interests of all parties concerned. When the news at 10 returns, World Bank expresses worry about the economies of the Middle East and Northern Africa. And this is coming from our crew at the World Bank IMF Spring Meeting in Washington, D.C. That's on Business News. Join us again. Thank you.